have somebody in the audience tonight whose family has been tremendously impacted by synthetic drugs. Um, she is a teacher at Riverdale High School. She teaches ninth grade. She and her husband, Greg, um, have reached out to me and, and felt like they had a story that they shared. Um, Ms. Wyant actually said that she felt that God um, had led her to call me. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Brooke Wyant and let her share the story on how synthetics have impacted her life and her family. Thank you. I called um, the um, Murfreesboro Police Department about a week ago when walking into Riverdale, I saw um, the marketing poster for tonight's awareness program and immediately felt like God was calling me to come speak. And so before I did, I um, had the permission of my son to be able to do this. And so I speak for, speak for him. My name is Brooke Wyant. My husband's name is Greg. I teach at Riverdale and my husband teaches at Siegel. We have four children and um, one of our chil children, Dylan, who will be 20 years old in March, Fantastic kid, uh, six foot four, about 200 pounds. Um, not the jock type because he has an incredible gift for music. That was his love. He chose not to play sports. He uh, plays the piano. He can play the, um, the guitar. He can play the bass. You give him an instrument, Dylan can play it. Graduated from high school in three years because he came into high school having already completed two of his math courses, because he's so brilliant. And um, graduated from Riverdale in May of 2010. Um, like any other teenager, I, I, you know, give, they give you a hard time. I teach 130 teenagers every day, so I kind of get used to it. Uh, spent the summer last summer with us before he was able to take his full ride scholarship, got his lottery scholarship, MTSU scholarship. Um, his GPA was a 3.9, made a 29 on the ACT, and was given, was given it all. And spent his first semester at MTSU, uh, didn't have to work because of his, of his scholarship. Um, and graduate, or finished his first semester very well. Um, in December of last year, Dylan discovered Molly's plant food. A friend just brought it to him. Uh, he went through an enormous amount of money very, very quickly. And when he no longer had money of his own because he the job that he did decide to get, he couldn't hold. He resorted to stealing from his 16-year-old sister, from stealing from his older sister, from taking things that belonged to his brother and hawking them. Um, my youngest daughter even got to the point when she left the house, she, she would lock her door. Because we, we kind of felt like we thought it was Dylan, but we weren't really sure. At this point, I started getting a little, wondering about a few things. Um, drug tests, I had him drug tested. I drug tested at home myself. I took him to his, his doctor had him drug tested, completely clean, came up completely clean, and it was kind of a, you know, see mom, everything's okay. Couldn't even hang with school. Um, has, has since, Failed out of school. Oh, I don't want to say failed out of school. Dylan kept his GPA, but um, has been withdrawn from MTSU because he couldn't handle it. Um, and has now officially lost all of his scholarships. So if and when he gets his life back together, he goes to school and has to foot the bill himself. Um, my husband and I decided, in order for Dylan to get his life put back together, we decided this summer when he moved back home, 
we had some boundaries. If you want to live home, Dylan, this is what you have to do. Uh, you had to get back in school, you had to get a job, and you had to seek some counseling. Because by this point, Dylan was honest with me about what Molly's plant food was. I was completely ignorant to it. I teach high school and I still had absolutely no idea about it. Um, my husband and I did a lot of research. Um, realized at this point, it, it, it's the, the September raid that we all read about in um, the newspaper had not occurred yet. And so at this point, Dylan could still go in and get it. Uh, and s sadly, I think I'm, um, I'm learning through therapy. That's not my fault, but I'm, I'm not quite there yet. Um, I gave Dylan a lot of opportunities. Uh, many times I, mom and dad listened to me. I gave him my check card, you know, do you want to fill up your, my car with gas? Or he was going to the store for me. And all he had to do was go to Mapco. And, and because my credit card statement or my bank card statement said Mapco, I never questioned it. I never knew what he was doing. Though I truly have not seen my son, my son, in almost a year now. Um, any way, he could, anything he could possibly do. Anything. I, I just recently went into my car to get my GPS out, and I realized it wasn't there. And I'm certain it's at some pawn shop because to sell my GPS for 10 bucks or $20 gave him a hit or two. Uh, so we gave Dylan a, a boundary. And the first couple of days, he seemed like he was doing pretty well. And, and he, he just didn't hang with us. He just didn't. We didn't see um, him go. We, he, he enrolled back at school and, and quit. He never got his job. And so we came to him and said, we really feel like you need to go to therapy. And we took Dylan to Cumberland Heights in September of this year. And uh, the first week of outpatient therapy, because that's all my insurance company would approve, at that point, it didn't show that he was using because, of course, this drug is um, not showing up on, on uh, drug, drug, drug screens. So um, he went to that first week of therapy and was doing really well. I, I was almost too hopeful. When he's scheduled to go four days out of the week, Monday, two, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he went every day that week. I'd spoken to his counselor. Things were good. And that next weekend, I saw him kind of turn back to the Dylan I'd seen over the last several months. Monday, he explained to me why it, he, it was okay if he missed a therapy appointment. And again, I just kind of sat back. Okay, it's okay. Tuesday, he lied to me. I come, in, come to find out he lied to me for the reason that he wasn't at therapy. Wednesday, he didn't go. And Thursday that week, he did go. And he did go on Thursday because that was a family night. And he wanted to make sure he got there. And instead of me being there, he lied to me. He told me that something happened with family counseling and I wasn't supposed to go until the next Thursday. Well, the reason he didn't want me to go that Thursday night is because we, come, we came to find out that he had lied to his therapists or his counselors during the rest of the week as to why he wasn't at counseling. September the 30th, 30th of this year, just a few weeks ago, I was at a football game and Dylan had told me that he was going to his counseling session. And I had just, he, I had given him my car. I gave him my car because I was doing everything within my power to get him the opportunity to go to these counseling sessions. He didn't have a car. He had, um, had totaled his about two months prior to it. And we had, until we knew that he was setting himself up in the right direction, had refused to give him the money towards his counseling or towards his new car. September 30th came. And I'm rushing to get to a ball game. And I knew he needed money for gas for my car. Guilt. This is guilt. Um, and I gave him $40 and said, Dylan, now you promised me you're going to spend this on gas. You're going to fill up my car. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Mom. I'm going to a counseling session. 
Dylan never made it to the counseling session that night.